we are in Ranwelli Spice Garden. Let's go and have a look at the spices. So this is turmeric. Amazing, eh? So I've been looking for turmeric leaves in the UK to do some cooking. So if you can just see here, this is what the turmeric root looks like before it's uh, dried and put into a powder. So isn't it fascinating? That's turmeric. Miracle wonder herb. So next one up, quite difficult to guess. Can you see? That's vanilla. You've got uh, one vanilla pod ripened on the left and one green one on the right. So a very expensive spice and the little animal that helps to germinate them is almost extinct which is um, endangering the uh, future of the vanilla tree. So what's next up? Coffee. 100% Arabica beans. So this is what they look like before they've been roasted. Fascinating, eh? So if you're going to hear me over the noise of the um, traffic, this is a betel nut tree and where they get the betel or betel nut leaves is the vine which creeps up the tree. So next up, very hard again to guess what it is unless you're familiar, this is ginger. So the type of ginger we get from this uh, local organic, everything's organic here, is this type. So nice and pungent. So just going back to the beetle, this is a beetle nut. So inside there's a little nut, very, very popular to chew, mixed with tobacco and uh, lime and palm leaf. So this is your um, cocoa growing out very small at the moment. So, amazing, absolutely amazing. Pepper, so there's four types, white, once it's boiled, green, straight off the uh, tree. Black pepper when it's been um, dried. So look at the big leaves, fascinating. Oh, it's another really interesting tree. I don't know whether you can see that, but let's zoom in a bit. So look at that. So there's cloves, what they look like on the tree before they've been dried. Another fascinating tree used for anaesthetic and obviously cooking. One type of pineapple here, the smaller type red pineapple not commonly eaten but um, used for decoration and um, making different types of medicine uh, this is the green pineapple commonly eaten and while we're on the subject papaya so when it's green like that it's really good for grating and it's nice and sour great for salads and when it's ripe it's even more delicious. So we've got a little selection of chilies here. There's long chili and this is bird's eye chili. Apparently they're hot. I didn't really think so. <laughs> I've just chewed one. So once again is cinnamon. Uh, this is the best country in the world for cinnamon and obviously this is Tajpata or um, Indian bay leaves, cinnamon leaves used to make cinnamon oil or um, put it in biryani. A bit more cocoa there. Easily identifiable I think, aloe vera. So this might be quite difficult to identify. Let's have a little close up on the uh, goods here. So, can you see what those two are? That's cardamom. So, fresh cardamom pods. Awesome, eh? Awesome. So, another one that could be pretty hard to identify. This is nutmeg. Indigenous to Indonesia. You've got the actual nutmeg inside. I've never picked one up so fresh for 
quite some time. And then you've got um, the mace, look at the great, great colour of mace before it's dried out and turns a caramel brown. Another fascinating herb, herb that grows on a tree called Ixora. So it's uh, very good to treat all types of skin ailments and um, newborn babies have this boiled in the water for their um, bath, which is really good for them. It is called Cesus, which is edible, particularly in North India, um, but in Sri Lanka it's uh, good for broken bones and fractures and that type of thing, you know, to turn it into a paste and apply to the wound or the broken bone. So usually on a plantation, as I said, this is all organic and uh, usually this uh, tree is usually um, grown in straight formations and it's usually straight. So this is rubber. So they score the tree in a spiral motion around the trunk and then the rubber comes out and they're using half a coconut here and that's exactly what rubber is. You can smell it, it just smells like rubber. So a native to Brazil, the British actually stole it in the 16th century from Brazil and took it around the world, uh, particularly to Southern Asia to cultivate it here um, in a warm climate. So it produced a massive industry and that's why Brazil didn't want anybody um, to take any of the cuttings or shoots out so they could go and start a, a market somewhere else. So Brazil had the monopoly on it and this is what it looks like. So obviously it can be heated up again and um, you know that's rubber. Nice little cocoa pods. This is curry powder in Sri Lanka which is using unroasted and unroasted. For unroasted curry powder we're using it vegetable curry. The ingredients are here, sir. Clove, cinnamon, cinnamon, and cardamom oil. Yes, right now, we can show. And the coriander, and the fennel, cumin, and together, dry curry leaves. The seven ingredients. They will roast, then grind, make powder. Okay, for the vegetable curry. And for the meat and fish curry, there are another type, roasted curry powder. The same curry powder we roast together, black pepper. Even Sri Lankan, we mostly like it having chili powder. We add more chili powder to get the spice hot. And the turmeric powder, the healthiest spice in the world. Any type of curry in Sri Lanka, we add turmeric powder. And the garam masala, you might be known, sir. Little bit different in Sri Lanka, we add 18 spices. 18 spices in this curry. Any type of curry in Sri Lanka, you can add. Okay, other things. Yeah, thank you very much, Janaka. Some great rice paddies here. All organic, local, lush, fertile. Pandan, I personally use it for air freshener or if I'm making certain Malaysian rices. It's uh, nice and fragrant. Sweet neem. You might know it as sweet neem if you use it uh, for skin or hair medicine, diabetes, migraine, you name it. But curry leaves and really, really fresh. Super tasty, straight off the tree. Oh, here's a tall one. Almonds. Badam. So this is for sandalwood. It takes about six to seven years to grow, to get the oil. Some people use it as uh, furniture polish. I've been to many a good restaurant in Asia where um, everything's just fragrant. All the furniture's um, smelling of sandalwood. Nice homely smell. So jackfruit. You can see where the jackfruits were attached. We're out of season, so we don't get to see any jackfruit on it. So here's a big tree, something quite interesting. Anybody who's seen Mel Gibson and Anthony Hopkins, The Bounty, or before that, it was Mutiny on the Bounty, the movie. This is what the story was based on, taking um, breadfruit, which is a breadfruit tree, from Haiti to Jamaica, because, you know, it was cheap fodder for the slaves, and the unique um, characteristic, I suppose, or feature about the tree is it's the highest yielding tree 
uh, per kilo of any tree. So it produces more food than any other tree in the world. Uh, it's out of season. I think we're getting a couple of sprouts on it, but and they're they're round, round and green, and pretty bland until you curry them, of course. Oh, what a fascinating spice shop! And Ayurvedic medicines certainly smells amazing in here. They've got everything you can think of. I won't go into too much detail because I've got so many, um, so many spice tours and shops and stuff like that. But wow, and it's all organic and it's grown locally. So I'll be making some purchases and doing some cooking as soon as possible.